Hello, I'm Joan Fabian, Joan of Art, and in Margaret Craig's studio. Okay, Margaret. Uh, in, your background is in biology. Yeah. Before you went and yeah. you got a degree in art. Yes, it is. Okay, and you are a printmaker. And I'm a printmaker, yes. And so that mixture has created this, this unique art that you do. Um, it not necessarily is printmaking, but it also involves painting, it involves sculpture, and also elements of light. Yes. And they see in that sculpture. So if you could talk to me about um, what informs your work in the beginning, like when we were talking about biological, scientific illustrations. Yeah, like well I think when I started out, because I was um, a biology major, um, and then I had a secondary education put on that so that I was a teacher, which I never did. But um, all that biology works really well if you have artistic interest because it teaches you how to see. And um, artists really have to learn how to see too. And of course, in looking and looking at nature, you spend a lot of time, you're, you know, you're out in nature running around. Um, and all of a sudden you realize you look at a twig and you can differentiate a twig from one tree from a, from a twig from another kind of tree mm -hmm. because of the shoots and the branches and whatever and a tiny little almost microscopic level and so you're really seeing these differences and then of course you get even smaller and you get into like dissection microscopes where mm -hmm. you know you'll be doing an experiment with fruit flies and all you realize like you're looking for red-eyed flies for your experiment and they're absolutely beautiful I mean you have they're no idea how beautiful yeah there. insects are mm -hmm. you know because they're all shiny and colorful and uh -huh. iridescent like plastic. And, like plastic, yes, as we can see, as we can see here. Well, of course, we we make our advertising and our plastic mm -hmm. brightly cover, colored to attract, you know, as you know, animals do that to attract mates, and and flowers do that to attract, um, uh, you know, to attract uh, pollinators and things like that. So. Um, the, that's one of those things that we're influenced so by. So that's a biological art aspect in that if you're an artist, it's a plus. It's a plus, scientist. yeah, it's definitely a plus. And I think, you know, it also helps to have something as an artist to focus on. Um, you know, there's lots of different things we can wind up focusing on as artists. But I think the fact that I realized this world was there that I didn't know was there before. And then you go even smaller and you start looking at stuff under microscopes and you're studying that as well that that became almost a natural thing for me to sort of, sort of focus mm -hmm. on with my work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I'm really kind of interested in the intricacies of how things work and how they work together and I took a lot of ecology classes as part of my degree which is sort of how nature works and, and works yeah. itself, you know, to, to you know, work together and, and how things interact. You know, you, so your stuff would, would be considered organic as an element, as opposed to controlled. Well, yeah, I think I'm very attracted to just aesthetically, mm -hmm. you know, organic things, how organic mm -hmm. things grow. I think when I started out doing my work, it really was kind of trying to focus uh, in a sense on this world worlds that we don't see mm -hmm. so you're, you're zooming in on the wonderful wings of a fly and seeing all the intricateness I see that in a lot of your etchings that you've done in all the aspects I mean you take so many different ones and you you recreate your own reality that's you know the flip side is it's plastic it isn't yeah. really organic can you talk right. about that? The, the well, plastic the plastic came in later. I mean, because I've always sort of had this kind of ecology drive with my art. And at the same time, I'm a real experimenter with materials. Um, and so I've got, um, you know, I'm an etcher uh, and a printmaker. And so normally we make, um, you know, we take a uh, copper plate and we're inking it up and then we're printing that on paper which is I have some paper prints here 
But I was like, oh, I had this new acrylic medium that I would got to play with and, um, and was going to be teaching about. And so I was like, what happens if I put this acrylic medium on an inked plate? And that sort of created a stretchy etching, which then I started making forms. You know, so now I could be kind of dimensional with the stuff that I was mm -hmm. creating. And what type of plastic did you pour on, or you just Well, paint? it's called a, a stuff called clear tar gel, which mm -hmm. is an acrylic medium by Golden, which is right, a, and it's basically plastic based. It's plastic based, Poly. exactly. Yeah, it's a yeah, Polymer. it's a plastic plastic polymer. And so, so did you have wonderful texture on it too from the from the etching. So yeah, that's, actually, that process is printmaking. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, it's, even it's, if it's that far out, it's it's print still making. a printmaking. Yeah, because this is I can make many more of these right. just so. by um, inking up a plate, spreading mm -hmm. that acrylic on, letting it dry, mm -hmm. and and then where I got even more of the plastic. So then I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna. Um, make forms. So I was making sculptural forms like because now I mean this is really How unusual. Is that? Yeah, to be able to make sculpture out of mm -hmm. out of your prints, which normally are mm -hmm. stuck flat. on flat paper. And then I was even buying plastic. And this is when I had that sort of Homer, Homer Simpson <laughs> moment <laughs> where you yeah. um, where I'm like, I've got this whole world of plastic to use, you mm -hmm. know, that's just one example, old kitty litter container. Uh -huh. um, and so I started sticking this on here and then I can manipulate it with a heat gun and shape it. And this incidentally really likes to stick, you know, the plastic really mm -hmm. likes to stick with a so little heat. Took you into sculptural round. Into sculpture, yeah. And so then I really got to start having fun with a lot of sculpture. Mm -hmm. And I have all these supports that are, um, you know, this is clear dry. orange juice. A few weeks of orange juice from my stepson, um, you know, created the support to put this on. And this, of course, got tied into something else mm -hmm. um, for a performance piece mm -hmm. that um, that I made for Luminaria a couple years ago and um, so everything sort of builds everything's I think when you're a printmaker you're naturally into layers and of course there's so many layers in nature as well mm -hmm. going back to that original twig that you know you look at the twig you look at its stem you look at it, its bud and mm -hmm. then you can take that down on the microscopic level and start taking shavings off of it and look at it yeah. as it gets smaller and it's like and an onion it just yeah. goes on and, and on and on and that sort of nature and I think as an artist you know the 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 onion of nature is really mm -hmm. nice to play with absolutely um, so you're also not only doing sculpture and and printmaking and painting you're also doing books now well books i've always done a little book here but and with there. this material yeah with this material of course i started recently sort of incorporating the flat prints which mm -hmm. i wasn't before they were really you know kind of their own thing mm -hmm. and now i'm sort of incorporating that and making some artist books mm -hmm. with both the sculpture and the plastic bits mm -hmm. as well as having the paper aspect in there mm -hmm. so having incorporating the both which i've was doing just you know sort of flatly i've got some pieces on the wall over there that that start at that and then um and then i started like well i've been using the dimensional stuff from um from products you know trash mm -hmm. recyclables mm -hmm. what about the labels from that and so then in this work i've started incorporating those labels and I've started really, these are sort of representations of ruins and piles of rocks. And I spent mm -hmm. some time in Italy wandering through Etruscan ruins and sort of sketches that come out of that. And then, you know, we humans, we go there, we go look at these ruins and then we drop our, our water bottles on the ground and we drop our candy mm -hmm. wrappers on the ground. And so I'm sort of incorporating that All back that. into, um, by taking, you know, the 7-Up label or the tea label or, you know, the chocolate mm -hmm. milk label or whatever we happen to have around. So you're making people realize what they're doing. Yes, yes. Like, well, what, what, what is that? I mean, when we, when we kind of visualize it out of the picture when we're experiencing Rome and the ro ruins and everything, but then there's all these water bottles that, oh, okay, I'm not going to see that. That'll spoil my enjoyment of this place. But you're putting it right under our noses and, and, and kind of it, when you want to look closely at it, 
you see the labels. That yes. association with advertising is yes. so powerful. Yes, and it's so much about what did people leave in the past and what are people leaving now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want people to think about, you know, how we are really literally littering the plastic. Um, this piece, you know, this is part of a piece called the Albatross, which is talks is really kind of talking about how we're polluting the ocean, mm -hmm. how you know this this trash we're leaving is killing albatrosses, um, you know, as as parents, yeah, parents feed it to their chicks, mm -hmm. and you know it's bright and shiny and looks like bright and shiny fish, mm -hmm. and so they, are, you know. All, and all the animals in nature that we are killing with our with our plastic, with our plastic, yeah, and, you're and our harder. trash, and what we left before, well, ruins and rocks and and ceramics, which kind of go back to rocks. Mm -hmm. Human trash of that time really isn't, uh, you know, isn't noxious to the environment where this really is. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, these plastic things that I'm creating, they're sort of this tongue-in-cheek thing that okay well there's so much plastic now in nature nature's going to have to learn to <laughs> use the plastic yeah, yeah. to you know create its own world so this is my you know as you're making something beautiful out of waste out of waste having it you know some people will want this in their home and, and your work is part of private collections and, and museum collections all over the world so it's making people aware of how much plastic is and it's, and it's helping you out to make that. Right. So it's kind of doing that whole cycle and mm -hmm. it's out of the way of the Roman ruins so we can still see the Roman ruins. We can still see the Roman ruins but... So that that's really important though you're not preaching it, you know. It, no. It, it, it's I, there. Yeah. It's I, there. I don't, I don't like to be preachy. I right. always like to have people kind of contemplate of maybe mm -hmm. what is I think what is this all powerful. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, you made this out of plastic? Out of plastic? What is that? I thought it was glass. I'm right. Like, no, there's right. no way I could drag this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If this was glass, I couldn't drag it behind me. And the nice thing about it being kind of this plastic material is it's really light, lightweight, mm -hmm. and it's really flexible and it's really kind of forgiving. So yeah, it sure is. I know I have one piece that you had given me and I had it out on my porch and I was like oh my god it got wet it it still looks the same it's yeah, the same it's... as when you gave it to me very durable yeah uh, it didn't even fade which is sadly the problem with plastics is the right. fact that they're yeah. you know collecting in the ocean gyres and, right. and because last it forever. just yeah. lasts forever and so that's what I kind of want people to think about. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually critters out there um, that they've discovered now and plastic things that bacteria that kind of make enzymes that will actually dissolve really? plastic. Yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. So there's actually these worms that eat plastic oh, and yeah I which I think is really kind of cool and great yeah. and um, I mean if you eat plastic are you gonna start looking like that I don't know but you're clear yeah, I'm sort of <laughs> abstracting on what you know uh, a coral reefs already look right. like right they're already these kind of things yeah. with with that floral true. sort that's of anemone true. anemone things on them and so uh, just sort of riff on that idea mm -hmm. New critters are evolving from this all this material that we've given nature to play with. These wonderful objects here, uh, it really looks like glass. It's just amazingly so. Uh, could you tell me how you made something like this from, from start to finish? Well, okay, probably the first thing that I'm going to do is create an etching plate. When we're when we're doing an etching, we're actually we're going to put a coating on a piece of copper, and we're draw through that coating, and then that actually goes into acid, and the acid eats away mm -hmm. wherever we've done the drawing and mm -hmm. creates a texture on the plate. So normally, when you're going to print an etching, you're going to rub ink into that texture and off the surface, mm -hmm. and you're going to put it through a press, which actually um, embosses paper into that texture. Mm -hmm. and so a regular printing press. Right. You put the plastic through that. Well, not yet. Oh, no, just I'm like, just ta describing oh, the first etching okay, part. The printing part. So instead of doing that, where I'm printing on paper, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually I've inked this surface up, and then I've 
poured this acrylic medium along here, on here. And the acrylic on, medium, you mean that stuff that you were talking the about? The clear tar gel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the clear tar base. gel is okay. a. Um, it's just a clear acrylic medium mm -hmm. amongst there's many different kinds of acrylic medium this one's just really nice because it's smooth self-leveling and flexible mm -hmm. and so we um i put that on there and then i can pull off when it's done mm -hmm. when it's dry which is usually overnight i pull it off and the ink comes off with Honest. it and once that's dry because that's got to dry for a week or so mm -hmm. i have a stretchy etching yeah so um, it's very flexible very flexible especially when you take heat gun to it and, and it then won't it's, tear then it doesn't tear no so then i actually i can what stick was this uh, originally i mean uh, this is the plastic that you poured on there yes yeah so this okay. is this is what i call a tar gel mm -hmm. etching so you so made your own plastic pretty much pretty much mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's okay. a it's a liquid acrylic and you know so when i'm going to do this to to make these guys here the support back here the support back here is actually kitty litter container <laughs> okay. so when i'm going to do this i'll cut out the print mm -hmm. or you know i'll have one that's shaped like this mm -hmm. and then um i'll heat the back of it with just a heat with gun with a blow dryer or heat um, gun yeah blow dryers aren't hot enough but a nice heat gun which uh -huh. you can get at home depot okay and um i'll have you know like some clamps or or um, pliers or whatever and i can manipulate it in this case i can kind of just push into it mm -hmm. and this likes to stick to this believe it or not when a little heat's involved yeah, and it is. stretches so they stretch together so that's how these guys are created mm -hmm. wow. and then of course i'm you know gluing and manipulating mm -hmm. them together mm -hmm. and we can kind of see i think these are probably all kitty litter containers this is probably a lettuce container or an apple container lid because it's clear mm -hmm. and you can then, still identify them huh yeah yeah no. <laughs> and this you know being, your plastic i know my plastics and then this is um probably i'm saying it's a blue plastic so so it came that way that blue you didn't it was paint this, it. no i didn't paint it um this mm. is a water bottle from um I think from Italy because I think when I did this piece I was in Italy, ah. and so I'm always wherever I travel to I'm always like Take grabbing stuff back, grabbing yeah. plastic, right, you know, right. and collecting it, and especially if it's an interesting color or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot more pretty colors of plastic bottles in Europe. I'll say that. So, they do. They do. So I've, I've sort of collected that, and mm -hmm. this is a little piece that hangs on a wall. And then I think this piece to make it shiny, I actually went over it with an epoxy just to make it really shiny so, so that it really has that glass look yeah plastic on it so to more unify plastic. it yes to unify it yeah so that's a sculptural piece in itself and this is a little sculptural piece in and of itself yes oh. and you hang that on the wall or i can hang it on, it on the pedestal? wall or put it on a shelf i think there's a hole here so i probably hung it on a wall it probably uh -huh. probably just hangs on the wall yeah. we'll do you ever <laughs> you make jewelry out of it um, I could, but I haven't so much recently. I've been sort of much more focused on the bigger stuff yeah, rather than kind of the smaller mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, I like intricacy, yeah. um, but... But I think the impact of having some so diverse with different you know, little trumpets, whatever you want to call yeah. them. Yeah. They look like jellyfish trumpets or something. Yeah. And each one of them is different, you know, mm -hmm. different drawings. Different. They're not all the same. It no. would be different if they were all the same. This way, it, it does look organic. Yeah, they're very they're they're their own life forms. Mm -hmm. So um, they're all you know scratched into plates. Or sometimes I'll use um, techniques in the etching that sort of mimic natural processes. Mm -hmm. So I've got some stuff that references. Um, marbling and paper marbling which is sort of like an oil slick on water mm -hmm. so that's what i think about it is it sort of being a natural pollution process so this plate has some um you know so this was medium that was floated on water and picked up on a plate and then once again it was put in acid and bit that pattern just like the it does with the marbling on the yeah. paper yeah but yeah this is really clear it's a little duller on this side, but it's really shiny on this side. So, are they all 
Yeah, on they're the all inside. They're and all shiny on the outside. Duller on the side that has picked up the ink. Okay. Because that's you, got the dimension from the plate, and I'm not sure how much the camera picks up. But if you feel this, you can feel that there's a dimension that yeah, that's what's really, catching the ink. So you did this, all this mm -hmm. etching here, mm -hmm. and this is an etching plate. Right. You, so you, right. Margaret, the printmaker here. This is Margaret, the printmaker. So these are all prints on here and I identify as a printmaker right um, as well as you know artists we do everything these days we're not just confined right. to That's you know doing one medium you know call us artists in opposed to you know you know one thing because you Printmaking, yeah. you just say that's limiting. You're not just a painter, yeah. you know, and you're not just a sculptor. You know, I cut um, wood, I, uh, you know, I do, I do printing processes too, but that was your focus. You think like a printmaker, however yeah. that is. Yeah, well, I think printmakers, we think in layers. So yeah, you think it's layers. it's very natural to like keep building and building and building. Right, you and know? then, you know, in this, in this sense, you can see through it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very cool. And of course, then when you're thinking about, because I'm thinking about undersea, so then light becomes part of it because there's um, there's and you there's like, critters that create their own light and, under there. And you put these little lights inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is part of the big performance. This piece. is part of the big performance piece. Okay. Um, that albatross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is there's a there's a nice video on that, but that. Um, I did. I was commissioned to do it for Luminaria. Uh -huh. You walk couple, around and yeah, with this. You so couldn't I, see yourself. You were just consistent with that. Yeah. Um, I was actually had a big plastic al albatross around my neck. Um, <laughs> you because there, there's the, the plastic old... in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what will happen to you if you get drowned in, with all this plastic. With all this like plastic. Like those big islands of yeah. plastic yeah. that are out of the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to get your hands on that? No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot. You need more storage uh, than you have. More storage, either. yeah. I don't. I don't have enough room in the studio. <laughs> well, this is really, really fascinating to me. You know that that you can you can do all these elements with the drawing and the transfer and utilizing recycle. And now they call it upcycling. Upcycling, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, and making objects of beauty. But anyway, thank you so much for talking to Joan of Art. Well, thank you for asking me to talk. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for watching.